I cannot emphasize how important sleep is. I'm sure we all want to feel, you know, well rested, energized to face every single day head on sort of thing instead of having to drag ourselves throughout the day because we're a bit tired. Don't just wait for it to get really bad to then react to the situation and put solutions in place, like try and act now. Forget diet culture telling you to only eat at certain times in the day, listen to your body's hunger signals. We've all heard of that saying, you know, too much of anything is bad for us. Just like too little sleep is detrimental, too much sleep can also be bad for our health. We're not gonna sleep when we're dead. Okay, like that saying, like I actually really don't like that saying. Sleep is so important now, for you now and in the future. Hi guys, my name is Holly if you're new around here and this channel is all about investing in the health of you right now but also like thanking yourself a few years down the line because you've given a bit of thought to the health of future you as well and this video is all about tiredness, fatigue, that feeling that I'm sure a lot of us have experienced we can all relate to you know not wanting to get out of bed in the morning but wanting to scroll on your phone for hours late at night like we've all been there. It's also the norm it seems in like our current society when you ask someone how they are you'll often hear them say they're a bit tired you know like it's a default state so how this video is gonna work i will give you guys a very common mistake that we often all make you know something that's keeping us tired and then follow up with a solution or like examples of small but like very realistic changes you can make to avoid being tired so yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video and find it useful definitely give it a thumbs up if you do hit that like button down below and i will also say because it is the black friday season the whole month is about black friday i'm also wearing a yellow non hoodie right now my sister and i's online business so if you want to purchase anything for christmas get yourself or someone else a present i will leave the link down below as well as the discount code so definitely check that out but without further ado we will dive straight into the video so the first mistake that is keeping you tired is that you're not getting a sunshine and fresh air first thing in the morning now i live in the uk a place on the earth that doesn't often receive sunlight. For the majority of the year we have grey clouds, I mean today is quite an unusual day for November, we have some sunshine. However, I often like to start my day by going outdoors, whether that be on a run or a walk or a cycle at the moment because I'm injured and cross training. But you know, I try and get outside and get some sunshine, fresh air first thing in the morning. Sunshine is so so important more important than like fresh air although personally i do love that feeling of like crisp morning air on my skin it just helps to wake me up but biologically sunshine has a lot of effects on your body that will help you feel more awake during the day and then sleepy at night so you may have heard of what's called a circadian rhythm it's your internal body clock your kind of like sleep wake cycle and by getting sunshine first thing in the morning and i'm talking about sunshine within like the first hour for about 30 to 45 minutes that's all you really need what that does is it will help to reinforce the synchronization between your circadian rhythm so your internal body clock and the environmental day night cycle so that's going to make you feel more awake and alert during the day which is what we want and sleepy at night if you help to synchronize those cycles secondly biologically sunshine will inhibit the release of a hormone that we call melatonin and that makes you feel sleepy sunshine also has loads of other biological effects on your body you know like it boosts the release of serotonin which is the happy hormone it's been coined sunshine exposes you to vitamin d which helps you absorb calcium and has a whole host of benefits on your body but those are just some of the reasons why getting sunshine first thing in the morning is so so important getting outside first thing in the morning like it makes me feel so so much better like i feel instantly more energized and as i said some solutions to this so this might involve like slightly changing your morning routine but it doesn't have to be that drastic so as i said you could go on a walk first thing in the morning like you could work out outside you know like i like to combine movement with fresh air and sunshine but you don't have to do that you could just simply sit outside and eat your breakfast i mean that might be really cold in the winter in like the uk and european countries and anywhere else in the world where it is cold in the morning but you know you could simply do that instead of eating breakfast you could journal or read for example but a really simple hack is to just 
open your curtains first thing in the morning or like open your blinds and a hack with blinds what i do is i will often rotate my blinds backwards so that when the morning does come and the sun rises like the rays penetrate through the blinds and they enter my room instead of like closing them the normal way as it were but yeah it's just the exposure to sunshine which is really important and i do encourage combining that with fresh air because i definitely think it does something and it makes me feel so good mistake number two then is that you're relying too heavily on caffeine most likely in the form of coffee to get yourself through the day now i've made a whole video on coffee like kind of my story with coffee so i will leave that link down below if you are interested but caffeine yes it is a drug it's a stimulant it's actually the most widely consumed psychoactive substance in the world and most of that is consumed in coffee but something that i find really interesting with coffee especially in the context of tiredness, is that this idea of the coffee cycle has been sort of proposed because coffee is kind of like paradoxical in a sense. You know, yes, it can boost performance, productivity, make you feel more awake, less tired. And that is because it blocks predominantly two of the four adenosine receptors, so A1 and A2A. But at the same time, caffeine can disrupt sleep. And so this cycle is a thing because, you know, people drink coffee, say, to boost productivity, to make them feel more awake and alert and improve cognition and stuff like that. But then it might disrupt their sleep. And so sleep deprivation will make you feel more tired the next day. You know, you might have deficits in cognition, alertness, wakefulness, stuff like that. And so you drink more coffee and then the cycle begins again because it's going to disrupt your sleep. And so this is the vicious cycle, as it were, the coffee cycle. So things to remember about coffee then. It has a mean half-life of five hours. So if you drink it too late in the day, it's going to potentially disrupt your sleep. And studies show that, you know, caffeine's effect on sleep is dose related. So the more coffee you drink, the more it's going to impact your sleep quality. I also know that coffee to make you feel more awake is often the more convenient option. You know, we live in a society that strives for convenience. A model actually showed that 200 milligrams of caffeine was equivalent of getting three more hours of sleep but personally i think it would be so much better for you now and in the long term to invest in getting better quality sleep as opposed to relying on coffee everyone is also different when it comes to caffeine and so as i said before like it has a mean half-life of five hours but lots of factors like genetics whether you smoke or not, pregnancy, oral contraceptives can affect its half-life and how it's metabolized. But my rule with coffee, you know, because I do drink it, I don't drink it every day, but I enjoy the taste. Now, why is there a fly in my room? Like why? <laughs> Sorry. But my number one rule with coffee is if it affects my sleep, I will not drink it. And so some solutions here, I'm not saying you have to completely cut coffee and caffeine from your diet but what i would say is have a rule with yourself be strict with it you know i don't drink coffee if i am going to drink coffee one day i don't drink it past 12 noon don't drink too much i mean maybe you know you drink a lot of coffee and it is disrupting your sleep and in that case maybe you need to slowly reduce your caffeine intake and your coffee intake recently i bought a coffee alternative now i know these are maybe controversial i mean you could drink decaf which still contains a bit of caffeine and depending on you and how sensitive you are to caffeine that might be better but yeah you could also rely on better sources of energy to you know make you feel more awake which will lead me on to my next point mistake number three then why is this fly like in my room like please go away if i see that one more time i'm done mistake number three then as i said leads on from my last solution but it is to say that you are tired all the time because you are not fueling your body properly and you're not eating enough and you're not eating enough of the right foods forget diet culture telling you to only eat at certain times in the day to drink water when you feel hungry to like you know restrict and count calories like forget diet culture okay listen to your body's hunger signals eat three nutritious well-rounded and balanced meals with carbohydrates fats proteins everything in one eat those proper meals don't just rely on snacks throughout the day to get by and then eat snacks as well between meals if you feel hungry as i said with coffee before and like with snacks like snack foods they're really convenient it's very quick to just 
buy a snack, buy some crisps, buy some sweets and chocolate and stuff. And it's easy and a fast option, but like investing a bit more time into meal prepping or, you know, making yourself a proper meal as opposed to just relying on snacks and processed and ultra processed foods, which again, I recently talked about in a video, but you know, like investing time into planning your meals and actually eating proper meals will give you so much more energy than just relying on like snacks throughout the day. Personally, you guys know if you've followed me for a while, I eat a plant-based diet focused on whole foods predominantly, but my main solution here is to stop relying on caffeine and snacks throughout the day and to actually make yourself proper meals through proper meals and have snacks in between. And just honor your hunger signals, okay? If you are hungry, you're hungry. You don't just want water. Mistake number four then is uh, slightly different but you are spending time on your phone first thing in the morning and often too much time because we all know how addictive tiktok and social media apps are they're designed to make you use the app stay on the app once you're on it and personally i'm in a lose-lose situation when i use my phone first thing in the morning first of all it leaves me with a headache and that's probably because first thing in the morning you know i haven't had anything to drink i'm not well hydrated and looking at a small screen just makes it worse but then secondly i try and sleep that headache off so you know not only have i given myself a headache but i also sleep for longer and don't get out of bed because of the headache so as i said lose lose situation and i just would not advise going on your phone first thing in the morning so the solution obviously to this one is to not use your phone first thing but in terms of how you can do that how you can make a change the first which i think is definitely the best is to invest in a proper alarm clock or use something other than your phone to set alarms personally i don't do this and i think i really need to make this change because if your phone is the alarm like there is a temptation then to use your phone first thing if you're using something different to set an alarm then on top of that you can put your phone in a different room or outside your room so it's nowhere near and then the alternative solution like if you do still use your phone like myself to set an alarm first thing in the morning make sure you keep it on sleep or sleep mode so that you prevent all your notifications and stuff like that coming in until like at least an hour after your alarm so don't turn the sleep off when your alarm goes off turn it off like an hour or even two hours afterwards so that again you're reducing the temptation to use your phone mistake number five is that you're not protecting your nighttime routine or you don't have a proper night routine now i personally wouldn't say i'm in the best position with this and you know that's just to say that i'm human i make mistakes i'm not perfect i don't do all of these seamlessly but you know like your night routine is very very important i often go through phases sometimes i'm so excited to sleep other times oh my god i really just don't want to go to sleep right now but like at the end of the day sleep is so important and you will feel so much better like so energized and refreshed and rejuvenated after a good night's sleep and that comes with a good night routine so in terms of solutions things you can do the first thing i think is you definitely need to like have at least an hour where you start to wind down before you go to bed like set a time when you want to be in bed and an hour before you want to start calming down winding yourself down try and avoid screens if possible especially like small screens with very like bright light because as i said before light as a stimulus it inhibits the release of melatonin which is going to make you feel sleepy and we don't want that at night so try not to use screens or if you do like dim the brightness something that has always helped me with regards to sleep is reading before bed mistake number six then is that you're just sat at your desk all day and you're not moving your body enough like i can say hands down i am very often at my desk you guys see me at this desk all the time i'm filming here right now and i feel very sluggish if i spend the whole day at my desk my muscles feel really tight my glutes are really sore my joints are really like stiff just because i've sat down all day like literally my bum hurts so much if i've been sitting down too much and sometimes i need to do that if i'm working a lot but i try not to if i can because with exercise and movement generally yes it uses energy but like with sunshine in the morning it has a whole host of benefits on your body that will make you feel good and feel energized it causes the release of endorphins which makes you feel happy not necessarily like not tired but that endorphin rush is so energizing i find and 
I always sleep so well after a day where I've been on a long run. Now I'm not saying you have to go and run a marathon or run like this crazy distance to, you know, move your body and to make you feel sleepy in the evening. I'm not saying that. I'm just encouraging you guys and reminding you to like move your body and it can be movement in any way that feels good for you stretching and yoga and pilates can be really really useful so solutions as i said my best thing to do is to start my day with sunshine fresh air and movement it combines three things that make me feel really energized if you say have a break or a lunch break for example maybe you could get up 10 to 15 minutes before that and just like walk around for a bit, stretch your body and loosen up a bit. I would encourage you to like actually schedule time for movement and working out, like make a workout routine within your week. And if you do have a desk, something that I don't have, but in the future I would potentially love to have a standing desk so that I can stand and work sometimes. Yeah, in this hunched up position at our desk, especially if we're not thinking about our posture and stuff like, you're gonna feel stiff and you're not gonna feel your best. Mistake number seven then is to say that you might actually be sleeping too much. Now we're going back to sleep and this one kind of sounds strange at first, but like we've all heard of that saying, you know, too much of anything is bad for us. Just like too little sleep is detrimental, too much sleep can also be bad for our health. There is a medical condition called hypersomnia. It's where you sleep too much and it leads to feelings of tiredness and like low energy levels amongst other things and too much sleep can actually increase your risk of like cardiovascular disease diabetes and obesity so there are things to be concerned about beyond you know feeling tired if you sleep too much and the reason why this probably is is because it upsets your circadian rhythm so your body clock your internal body clock you know if you're waking up midway through the day and that fly is actually back. I'm so sorry. If you wake up like, I don't know, at 12 noon beyond that in the afternoon and you're just starting your day then, you're obviously not gonna feel sleepy when the sun sets and we should be going to bed with the environmental day night cycle. So solutions to this, obviously, as I said before, like protect your night routine, like have a night routine. Also have a morning routine so you get out of bed in the morning. Like aim for seven to eight hours of sleep. And what you might be doing is you might be lying in bed on your phone. So that might be causing the oversleeping. So again, try and be mindful of where you put your phone in the morning. Like maybe put it outside, use something else to set an alarm, as I said before. Get out of bed and immediately do something. So I always wake up and drink water first thing and you need to almost like attach something to you waking up out of bed that will keep you up instead of just getting up to turn the alarm off and then walking straight back into your bed to just fall asleep again the last mistake then number eight because i have eight in total is that you're just simply not motivated this one is definitely from personal experience from recent personal experience and this might be psychological but i feel like when i'm not motivated i'm in a bit of a slump a rut a low i just feel more tired like i convince myself this fly is actually back get away whoa now i've lost the pen everything is going wrong just like i was saying like everything goes wrong my theory is that when you're more motivated everything just starts going wrong and so you probably will end up tired alongside it being maybe psychological you know when i'm not motivated I'll stay up too late, I'll go on my phone before bed. I won't wake up in the morning, I'll go on my phone, I won't want to move my body and exercise and stuff like that. And I've hit this low right now because, you know, I'm injured and I've fallen out of a lot of my routines that hold me up and, you know, make me feel my best and energized and not tired. So like, I do feel like there is definite truth to this. So my solution to this, and I did this recently, is to start setting yourself goals now. I recently made a video where I kind of like set my 2024 goals now. If you start setting things in place now, it will really help you get going, feel more motivated. And over the past two weeks, you know, I felt a lot better having done this. And the second thing I would say is just like have a big reset. Like if you've got these morning and night routines, maybe they're not working for you. Maybe you need to do something different and spice up a bit. So yeah, that is today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Going forwards, I said this on my Instagram recently, but I will be posting every Sunday. So a new video 
long form video every Sunday and then shorts throughout the week. But yeah, definitely like it as I said before if you enjoyed it and something you can do from this video, you know, if you've recently responded with, you know, oh, I'm a bit tired to someone, then try and do something about that. Don't just wait for it to get really bad to then react to the situation and put solutions in place. Like try and act now. Do something really small and simple. Pick one thing from this video one of the solutions and try it out and see how it makes you feel feel free to comment down below any other ideas thoughts solutions also a reminder the discount for Nana is linked down below but yeah i hope to see you guys in my next video if you're new around here definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when i upload and as always i will leave you with the bloopers and speak to you very soon in another video bye guys i haven't even filmed anything in the bedroom today down 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 there's a geo suit in my mouth fluff up the hair what the hell my name is holly and if you're new around here this channel is not about doing my hair yeah it's just not about that so in this video i'm not gonna be playing with my hair the whole time like please just give me a moment to just deal with this go away fly <gasps> If that fly comes one more time, I'm I'm not gonna whack it, but I'm getting out of the room. <laughs>